Good morning and a warm welcome to everyone who has joined in this Christmas morning for our service, both who have come physically, who have come together, and even those who are with us online. A warm welcome to everyone on this Christmas morning. I want to share with you a message that is simple, but that will remind us of the most important things and truths about Christmas as we remember and celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, as we remember and celebrate that he came because God our Father loved us so much that he gave his only son. And we remember the power of the Holy Spirit that made all of this possible. Let us revisit some very important truths to be encouraged in, this, in the Lord this morning as we live in a very chaotic time that is uh, in the midst of all that is happening in the world around us. There is so much of fear. There are there's so many concerns. There are so many questions. And uh, men and women are trying to maintain their sanity and trying to maintain their focus on what they think is important. Let us on this Christmas morning remind ourselves of what is really important. And let us once again hear these very simple but very important truths um, that will help us to be encouraged in our relationship with the Lord and as a community. You know, Christmas is a reminder, firstly, that God always has a plan. It is detailed. It is mysterious. It is beautiful, it's wonderful, and it's happening right now. Right now, on this 25th of December, 2021, as we are even nearing the end of this year, and we see that the world is hurting, God has a plan. And that plan is to redeem, reconcile people unto himself, renew, and restore us. All in the Lord Jesus Christ. So on this Christmas day, as we recollect the details of Christmas, we recollect the details of the Lord's birth, how it was foretold, how God brought all of those events together on that day, how God involved people from every walk of life and every segment of society, how God orchestrated orchestrated things within an empire and moved things and events for the birth of his son. Let us remind ourselves that God has a plan. And that plan was activated the very moment we see in scripture in the book of Genesis that the fall of mankind happened in sin. We see that God activated his plan. And that plan has been going through all the generations. And here we are sitting today and hearing today his message, experiencing his love, his presence, because God has a plan. And if this Christmas morning, things are not the way they should be in your life, you are right now hurting, you're right now perplexed, you're right now feeling fearful. I want to encourage you and remind you, beloved, as we rehearse the Christmas story, that God has a plan, my beloved. And his plan is not like the plans that people make. You know, many times I make plans for events, I make plans for myself, my family, for, my, for, for the work of the ministry. And there are times I miss out on certain details. I remember later, sometimes it's in the middle of the night or in the middle of a shower, or it's because somebody has graciously reminded me, I remember some details and I put it down. But that's not with God. God does not forget any details. In fact, there's nothing that he even needs to know or remember. He's all-knowing. And God's plan is perfect and all-encompassing. And so, beloved, I want to encourage you this Christmas morning. God always has a plan. And that plan is to redeem. That plan is to reconcile us back to God and keep us reconciled. God's plan is to renew all things. He wants to make all things new. He wants to restore it. In fact, he wants to bring it to a level of glory that mankind has never, never experienced, not even at the beginning of creation, not even before the fall. And that is why 
the new covenant that Jesus has made with us is an eternal, glorious covenant. God always has a plan. The second thing I want to remind you and encourage you this Christmas morning, this is, this is beautiful and this is precious. God's plan involves you and me. You know, when I look at the details uh, given in the gospel of Luke, and Luke's gospel is the gospel that actually gives us the, the, the most uh, number of details about the Lord's birth. You know, Mark doesn't cover it at all. Uh, John directly goes to the divinity of Jesus. Uh, Matthew, of course, begins with the genealogy, but it is Luke who gives us a glimpse into the details that surrounded um, uh, the birth of Jesus. And uh, as we look at the Luke's gospel and, and when we come uh, to Luke chapter three and we see how you know Luke names people um, who were in charge, who were high and mighty and prominent in his day. You know, he names the emperor, he names uh, the governors of those regions where uh, you know the work of the Lord was unfolding and, and happening. And uh, he names even the high priests who were in charge, you know, and we see that these uh, high, mighty, prominent, powerful, apparently people who were there right now in that situation were actually mere peripherals and footnotes in the outer frame of God's plan. But God chose the lowly, the humble, and the faithful to be the center stage, to be in the center stage of God's plan and his workings. Uh, dear beloved brothers and sisters, I want us to remember on this Christmas morning, what kind of people is God looking for to unpack his plan, to activate his plan, to work with them, in them, through them? It is the humble beloved. It is the lowly. It is the ones who are sincerely available to him. You know, your greatest life-changing answer is a sincere, wholehearted yes to God. That yes, the kind of yes that Mary said to the Lord, you know, the kind of yes that Joseph said to the Lord, the kind of yes that John the Baptist said to the Lord. And we see that the disciples said that yes to him in, in the Gospels, you know. Beloved, that's the kind of yes, not a superficial one, but a wholehearted, sincere, humbling, surrendering yes to God. Yes, God, I'm available for you because God's plan wants to involve you and me, beloved. So Christmas is a reminder, you know, that God's plan involves you and me, but it's also a reminder of what kind of people does God involve in his plan. We don't want to be in the peripheral of God's frame. We don't want to be in the, in the footnotes. We don't want to be mentioned by the way. We want to be part of God's plan, you know, as detailed as it is, as beautiful as it is. And so it is encouraging for me that God would choose me, a, a sinner by birth, that God would want to choose me, an imperfect man, that God would want to choose me uh, and you in order to fulfill his plan and his purpose right now in this time, in this generation. The third thing I want to remind you is that God's plan is all packaged in a message, the gospel. Beloved, we can never, ever forget this. We can never, ever ignore this, that God's plan is in a message. It's all loaded, packed into a message. And I want to read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 to 21. And this is what the Apostle Paul writes, for the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not come to know God, God was pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe in the gifts of the spirit. I believe God does awesome things. But none of those things in, in themselves save people. All of those things and much more infinitely are included in the gospel. But what saves people, what transforms families, what changes lives, what gives us a hope that is unshakable and immovable is a message, the message of the cross, beloved, the message of the gospel. And Christmas is a reminder of the centrality and the supremacy 
and the absolute need for us to abide in the gospel and to make the gospel known. Don't spend your Christmas just singing carols. Preach the gospel. Make Jesus known, as Paul said, I preach Christ, therefore, and him crucified. He says in another place, I made it my aim not to do anything else, but to preach Christ and him crucified. In him is all the things we need for life and godliness. Every prayer that is answered, every miracle that is needed, every healing that is needed, every restoration that is needed, every promise to be fulfilled, every hope to be consummated, everything is found in the message of the gospel. And what is the gospel? What is the message of the gospel? Paul would write in that same epistle of 1 Corinthians 15, and he would say, now I make known to you, Brothers and sisters, he says this from verses 1 to verse 4. 1 Corinthians 1, verses 1 to verse 4. Now I make known to you, brothers and sisters, the gospel, the good news which I preach to you, which you also received, in which you also stand, by which you also are saved, if you hold firmly to the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I handed down to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures what i just read to you beloved is the gospel and it is this gospel that needs to go to every one of your loved ones beloved even to the strangers god has commanded us to go to the world i would say begin with your world before you think of the world do people in your world know this gospel? Christmas is a reminder that there needs to be announcement of that gospel, just as there was an announcement on that first Christmas day. The angels announced it to the shepherds. The stars and the signs in the skies announced it to those who were looking above. God announced it in secret to the ones who were praying in the temple. Beloved, to all those who are waiting in darkness, in this world right now, there needs to be an announcement. And God wants to use you and me to make that announcement. Yes, maybe stars may be employed, maybe angels may be employed, but no one can take away the responsibility that is upon our shoulders. Beloved, Christmas is a reminder that God's plan is all packaged in a message, the message of the gospel that alone has the power to save and keep them saved who believe in it. So three things I shared with you till now. Number one, God always has a plan. Wow, Christmas is a reminder how chaotic it may be. You may be absolutely not in control of what's happening right now in your life. It doesn't matter whether I'm in control of what is happening or not. I've, I've come to realize the end day I'm not in control of anything except myself. I, I have to take responsibility for myself. That too, by the grace of God alone. But God is in control. And God always has a plan. And right now where we are, God's plan is all over the globe, all over the universe, and all over everything that concerns your life. Secondly, God's plan involves you. And it involves you if you and I make the good choice by the grace of God to be lowly, humble, and available. God's not attracted to prominence in the world. God's attracted to humility. God's attracted to brokenness. God's attracted and involves the ones who are available to him, yet not by their own will, but by the grace of God and his working alone. Number three, God's plan is all packaged in a message, the message of the gospel. Number four, Christmas is a reminder that God's plan is to communicate this message of the gospel through you in a language that the person or people around you can understand and respond. What is, you know, we, 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 my, one of the issues I have with uh, the way Christmas is celebrated uh, in the world, I don't even want to mention about the world, but even by Christians is over romanticizing uh, certain things and sometimes even things that are not true, that, that don't even have a biblical basis. Um, but but in, my issue is that when you over romanticize something and you exaggerate things that are probably not even true, you do it at the cost of what is true. You, you ignore the essential details. And what is the most important thing we see in the Gospels? You know, we look at Luke, you look at uh, Matthew. You see the birth was followed by announcements. In fact, there were announcements before his birth. We, we of course, 
you know, good Bible students know that his announcement was centuries before, you know, um, that was the emphasis I brought last Sunday in my message that God always foretells the Bible is the only book, the only book in the planet, on the planet, in the universe that has foretold details. And, and why? Because it's God's book, you know, and uh, as, as we look at as we look at that, we, we understand that God has always made announcements in advance. And, and I, I, I reminded you in the significance of Christmas that Christmas is a reminder um, of not only of his first coming, but also especially for us now of his second coming. The Lord is returning. And that even undergirds and under -emphas more, emphasizes even more. Uh, the need and the importance for us to understand what I'm what I'm sharing right now is that we need to be a people of announcement. We need to be a people who communicate his message in, in a language that the personal people around us can understand and respond. How do we know that people understand? It's because they respond. If people don't respond, then yes, we take it up in prayer. Yes, we continue to proceed. But what's your language? You know, um, uh, I kind of borrowed this quote uh, or this phrase from somebody else, but I had to rephrase it uh, to make it understandable for us. And that is this, contextualization is not making people hear what they want to hear. Contextualization is not making people hear what they want to hear, but contextualization is giving them God's message, that's the gospel, in forms and language that they can understand. So we see that in, in, in the Gospels. We see in Luke's Gospel. We see who made the announcements to the shepherds? The angels. And why the angels? I look at it, you know, um, the, the, I, I, get, I believe God wanted to help the shepherds understand that they are so valued that he actually sent angels to uh, declare the message to them. That they were so privileged, that they're so precious to God, that they would they would they would have angels come to them and share the good news to them, and not only that, they be they were able to behold a, an angelic choir. You know, people go on Christmas days to hear to watch and hear choirs, and you have the privilege, and here the here the shepherds have the privilege to hear the, one of the greatest choirs in the universe, and that is angels singing the glories of God. You know how wonderful an announcement. In, in a way that, that, that actually captivated their hearts and filled their hearts with wonders. And, and what did God use to communicate to the Magi, these wise men who, who came from the East, probably from Persia, men of renown, men of such high learning, men who wanted who were lovers and seekers of the truth, and men who were, who were, who were men who studied the stars, but God used the stars, because that's the form and language that they understood, the stars, everything in God's creation bears witness and announces his glory. The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament declares his splendor. So those who are watching the skies, those who are studying astronomy, God speaks to them in forms and language. Botany to a botanist, zoology to a zoologist, stars to an, astrono uh, to an astronomer. So God will communicate in forms and languages that people uh, can understand. And we bear that responsibility for the people around us, our oikos, our loved ones, our friends, our colleagues, speak to them, beloved, in a language. Be prepared. How was your content? You know, how was, how was your preparation uh, to share the gospel with people? Christmas is a reminder, beloved, that we are called to announce. We join the list of the people who announce. We join angels and, and, and people who went about telling the good news, proclaiming Jesus to, the, to those around them. Well, how did God reveal to Anna and Simeon who were in the temple where God revealed them? We don't have the details, but I believe that as they waited upon the Lord in prayers and fastings in the temple, God revealed to them supernaturally by his spirit. You know, so God communicates in forms and languages that people can understand. And Christmas is a reminder that we ought to also do the same, that we have to be announcers of the good news, not just singing carols, you know. So here, beloved, I hope that you've been encouraged by what I've shared with you this Christmas morning. God always has a plan. God's plan involves you and me, but we must be lowly and humble and available to him. Don't make excuses. It'll be at, at your own loss. 
be available to God in this new year. I'm being explicitly clear on that. Be available to him. Don't make excuses. Number three, God's plan and all that he has is packaged in a message, the gospel. Number four, God's plan is to communicate his message through you and me in a language that the people or persons around us can understand and respond. You know, I'm so grateful to God for this Christmas morning. This, this, uh, this Christmas morning is a, is a reminder of the hope that I have for myself and for, for, for my family. It's, it gives me peace. It gives me joy, the joy that doesn't come from things and from circumstances, but the joy of the Lord. The joy that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish in their sins, but have eternal life. The hope that I have that one day I will see my Farah again. The hope that I have that we will see all our loved ones again. The hope and the greatest hope of all and the, the greatest treasure in our hearts that one day we will be with our Lord, the darling of heaven, the King of kings, the Lord of lords for all eternity. This Christmas morning and this Christmas day, may the Lord fill you and your family with his love, his peace, his joy, his hope that is only found in the Lord Jesus Christ, in his gospel. The Lord bless you and your precious family.